Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today we have a very uh, wonderful gospel passage. We're taking place at the end of John 15 and the beginning of John chapter 16. And we can do some reviewing. We've talked about some of this before. Uh, no, so Jesus is he's talking about how the Holy Spirit is going to come. The Holy Spirit has different names that God, that Jesus gives him. And today in our passage is the Advocate. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. So the Holy Spirit is coming, and who is he advocating for? When the advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, he will testify to me. Who, the Holy Spirit is who's, who's advocate? Jesus. He's advocating on behalf of Jesus. So we've said this before because there's wrong teaching out there that people think, oh, the Holy Spirit is my advocate. No, he's not coming to advocate for you. <laughs> he's coming to advocate for Jesus. He's, he's constantly reminding us we, we got it, I think it was last week or the week before, a couple chapters back uh, where John, Jesus says in John, uh, the, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will remind you of all that I told you. <clears throat> so the Holy Spirit, that's his, his, one of his main jobs. He's advocating for Jesus, constantly reminding you and I what Jesus said. Because remember, remember we said, <clears throat> that's how we identify the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When we're going through our day, and, and all of a sudden, we remember something Jesus taught. That's not our brain. That, is the vo that remembrance is the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking. That's how you recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit when, when he speaks. Most especially when we're going about our day, and we remember something Jesus said that applies to whatever we're going through. You know, that God connection, that's not chance. That's God connection. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, just speaking our, our words that Jesus said. So that remembrance is the voice of the Holy Spirit. What's he doing? He's testifying to Jesus, constantly reminding us. Here's what Jesus said. He's the spirit of truth. So he's constantly reminding us of the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So the Holy Spirit is not our advocate. He's Jesus' advocate. <clears throat> Jesus is, is, whose advocate is Jesus? God the Father's. He's constantly telling us about the Father. Now when Jesus ascends into heaven and goes back to the Father, then he becomes our advocate. He's constantly at the right hand of the Father, advocating on our behalf uh, for, for our good and for our salvation to get to heaven with him. This is just important to know who's doing what, right? Who's who in the kingdom? Uh, <clears throat> who's doing what, what their job is? Because then, because th that shapes our prayer life. If I'm begging the, you know, if I'm begging the Holy Spirit to advocate for me, he's not going to do it. That's not his job. <laughs> That's not his role. He's going to say, wrong person, buddy. Right? <clears throat> so... <clears throat> Um, this shapes our prayer life. Then we're praying up according to the truth. Right here in the scriptures. Um, okay. So when we're praying according to the truth, we can have confidence that our prayers will be answered. So all, all this is important and connects. Now, okay, so G Jesus is saying, the spirit, who he will testify to me. And then he says, now you too, you also testify. He's speaking to the, uh, to the disciples. He said, Jesus said to his disciples, so are you a disciple? Am I a disciple? Okay, we get to testify. Now, he says, you testify because you've been with me from the beginning. Now, you and I, we weren't there when he was baptized, you know, walking, talking on the earth, but we've been there since our beginning with him, <clears throat> the beginning of our baptism. And when it says testify to Jesus, it simply means share what you've experienced with Jesus. Uh, if simple 
simple comparison example. You know, you ever talk to somebody as some, as around some holiday or season or something, and you say, well, you know, what did you, so what did, what did you guys do in your family growing up, you know, for Christmas, for Easter, for birthdays? What kind of family traditions do you have, you know, and then they share, oh, everybody comes to, we all go to my uncle's house or my cousin's house, or we go over, you know, and then everybody brings something and have a big old party, and there's all this dessert, and the kids are playing games, and, you know, whatever they share. Well, well that sharing... What did they just do? They just testified to their family tradition to you. And so when it says here, you also testify, it just means share some experience that you have with Jesus with somebody else. And, and, and we can match that with the need of the moment. Let's say somebody, they're very distraught, something's happening in their life that's not good, and so they're very, they're just, they're very uh, upset. They've got some um, fear, worry, or anxiety, or anger, worry, and anxiety, or what's going on in their life. They don't have peace. And you can, well, you can say right away, boy, you know, I've been there too. I had times in my life when something happened and it was just took away my peace. And you know where I found peace? I just had to get quiet, had to go sit with Jesus in my room or in the church, and, and I just got still with him until all these emotions started to settle, and I, did, and I finally started to just feel his peace. I said, okay, Lord, you're with me. You can help me get through this, you know. We all have different experiences like that, you know. You, that's, that's how you just, you just testified to the peace of Jesus Christ that you've experienced, that anybody can experience so just turn to him and just come sit with him. There's different things like this in our life that we've gone through. We've experienced God. We've had these God moments. Uh, and we can share those with people depending on what they're going through. Uh, we don't even have to force, even initiate. It's just, just meet the need of the moment with some experience that you and I have already had with Jesus. Now, Jesus says, now he says, so you also testify and I have told you this so that you may not fall away. So he, he has not even talked about persecution yet. The persecution he talks about next. But right now he's talking about testifying. I've told you this. I've told you that the Spirit is coming to testify to me and that you also need to testify to me. And I'm telling you this so that you don't fall away. That tells us that you and I, it's, a, it's vital that means it's necessary for our life in Christ that we testify, that we share our experiences with Christ with somebody else. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. It will be very interesting to do a little survey for practicing and non-practicing Catholics, the ones who have fallen away, and see who testifies and who doesn't. Who talks about their faith with others and who doesn't? And probably a commonality, just based right here in the scriptures, would be those who don't practice, they don't ever share their faith. And they fell away. Those who share their faith, they're still practicing today. Why? Because whatever you feed in your life will grow. And so if you're talking to somebody else about Jesus, that is feeding Jesus. That's growing Jesus in your life and somebody else's life, and it's going to grow. <clears throat> it's always interesting to me. Now, well, not about you, but when you, when, you, um, when you get fed up with something, and when I get fed up with something in, the, in the, the priesthood, then somehow somebody will come around and need to hear my testimony of how God called me to become a priest. <laughs> right? And I say, I don't want to share that right now because I'm not really happy about this right now. And then you share the testimony and it refires you up and builds you up and edifies you. Not only did it help them to hear it, but then it just rekindled your fire too. I have told you this, that you must testify so that you may not fall away. Anytime our faith is wavering, we're not sure about our God experiences, we don't feel connected to God, uh, go share your testimony with somebody. Uh, when you did encounter Jesus, when you did experience his peace, why you did give him your heart. 
And, and as you share that testimony of why you are in relationship with him, whatever doubts were there, fall away. It's a little remedy Jesus gave us. You also must testify, and I'm telling you this so that you will not fall away.